Hello guys. So in this video, we will learn how to implement forward propagation in an artificial neural network. So we will consider a network with two hidden layers and one output layer. So it will be a total three layer neural network. So let me show you the architecture that we'll be dealing with this. This is the, this is the neural network that we'll be implementing in today's video. Okay. So we'll just implement how to compute the forward propagation in this particular neural network. Okay. So for the sake of computations, implementation, we will consider in there is only one data point with us and it will have four features. Okay. So x1, x2, x3, x4 are the features and each hidden layer, layer 1 and layer 2 will have five neurons in them. Okay. And the layer 3, which is also our output layer, right. So it will have one neuron and the activation associated with the output layer will be sigmoid. Okay. And activations associated with layer 1 and layer 2 will be rectified linear unit. Okay. So, this is what we have to implement it. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I have just written the computations here associated with each layer. Computations at layer 1, computations at layer 2 and finally, the computations at layer 3 which will be our predictions or y hat. Okay. So, now before we jump into computations, we need to understand the weights and bias values or how they stack up with the dimensions okay so since we have five neurons in the layer one and four features with us the weights associated with layer one will be of shape five cross four and each neuron in this particular hidden layer will have its own bias so it will be five cross one right so weights will be of shape five cross four this will be an umpire array or if you can treat that as a matrix it will be a matrix of five rows and four columns and bias will be five different numbers for each of these neurons in this particular hidden layer. Okay. So, similarly for layer 2, the weights matrix or numpy array shape would be 5 cross 5. So, that I have written here. And similarly, the bias will be five different values, one each for one neuron. Okay. And coming to the last layer, layer 3, the weights associated with this layer 3 would be of shape 1 cross 5, 1 row 5 columns. And the bias will be just a single value because we have only one neuron in here. Okay. And these are the computations that we need to compute in order to complete the forward propagation till the output layer or the layer 3. Right. So, what is the first computation? It is computing the linear transformations in layer 1, which is computed as weights 1 into x. So, this multiplication here, it is a matrix multiplication. Okay. So, this is a matrix multiplication okay and this is the bias associated with layer 1 and we will take this z1 the linear transformation as input to our activation function so in this case it will be relu rectified linear unit we will pass this to relu and then store the output into a variable called as a1 so a1 is just the activation side layer 1 okay so let me just write it for this particular layer so it will be easy for understanding for the subsequent layers activation at layer 1 right so now what happens if we compute the activations at layer 1 the next step is to do the computations at layer 2 right but what are the inputs for layer 2 the inputs for layer 2 will be the outputs from layer 1 and what are the outputs from layer 1 the activations that is a1 so for layer 2 inputs will be a1 and the weights associated with this particular layer is weights 2 and the bias is bias 2. So, we will make use of these three stuffs that is A1, weights associated with layer 2 and bias associated with layer 2 in order to do the computations at layer 2. So, always the first step is again linear transformation weights 2 into A1 plus bias 2 and we will store this result in Z2 variable. And then we will pass this z2 to our rectified linear unit activation function and store the resulting output in a variable called as a2. And a2 here is activations at layer 2. Activations at layer 2. Okay. So, once we are done with computing activations at layer 2, we need to move a step ahead in order to compute the outputs at layer 3. Right. So, again for layer 3, the inputs would be output from layer 2 that is A2, right. So, inputs would be A2, weights would be W3, biases would be B3. 
making use of these three things we will compute z3 first again this is a linear transformation weights 3 multiplied with a2 again this is a matrix multiplication okay so here also it is a matrix multiplication for layer 2 also okay so weights 3 into a2 plus bias 3 and we will store that in a variable called as z3 we will pass this z3 value to a another activation function in this case we will use sigmoid activation function to get our desired activations at layer 3 which is also our predicted value y hat okay so this is what we are going to implement in this particular video from scratch just making use of numpy no other fancy libraries okay so let's get started so for that i have created a simple feature data point with four features for now we will just assume we have single data point with us okay so i have created the data point x so what i'll do i'll create the weights and biases associated with each layer now okay so i'll just comment out i'll say weights associated with layer 1 so it's just not weights i need to also create the weights and bias associated with layer 1 okay so for that let me just copy the value that i have here so i'll say weights 1 and bias 1 so both of this would be numpy arrays okay so as expected weights 1 would be of shape 5 cross 4 and bias 1 would be of shape 5 cross 1 so that's what we have here now what I'll do similar to what I have done for layer 1 that weights 1 and bias 1 I'll create weights 2 and bias 2 for layer 2 okay so what I'll do I'll just copy this I'll replace 1 with 2 so now what I'll do I will say weights 2 is equal to weights 1 divided by 2 so what it does numpy array if we if it sees this particular arithmetic operation it will divide individual element by the number that we have specified here so 0.8 would become 0 0.04 so similarly 0.5 would become 0 0.25 0 0.4 would become 0 0.2 something like that so this particular division will be element wise okay so that's what we will have in weights 2 so now what we will do we will create our bias 2 and it will be a numpy array let me just copy it I have the values specified here so these are some random values there is no specific thought process behind selecting these values okay so bias 2 is numpy array again it will have five values because we have five neurons in it now if you see the shape of this weights 2 matrix let me print it out print shape of weights 2 matrix is weights 2 dot shape okay and also i would like to show you the contents of that particular matrix print weights 2 okay so now if i just execute it let me just run it okay so you will see the output shape of the weights 2 matrix is 5 cross 4 but what we want we want to have this weights 2 matrix in the shape of 5 cross 5 right so what is missing here we are missing a column here so we have five rows which is required but we also want five columns but we have four columns so for that what we will do we will use a special attribute in numpy called as column stack okay so i will say weights 2 is equal to np dot so i'll just copy weights 2 is equal to np dot c underscore so this is a special attribute called as column stack so what it will do it will take two arrays and will try to stack the column as a another column the values that we specify as another column okay so i want to have another column in this particular weights 2 numpy array and the column values would be i can select np dot array 1 2 3 4 5 okay just for the clarity i am giving some space here now if we look at this particular shape and i have just executed it you see the shape of the weights 2 is 5 cross 5 after using this np dot c 
special attribute called as column stack okay so what it did it created a new column and assigned these values to it 1 2 3 4 5 or you can understand it in this way also so it has appended another column on on to the existing numpy array earlier it was 5 cross 4 right we didn't have this particular column now we have these values appended as a new column in this particular weights matrix weights 2 okay so now we have created weights 1 and weights and biases associated with layer 1 and layer 2 right so let me just remove this print statement i do not want that now what i need i need to create weights and bias associated with layer 3 okay so i'll just copy this comment i'll change it to weight layer 3 and what i'll do i'll create weights 3 and bias 3 numpy arrays so weights 3 will be of shape 1 cross 5 1 row 5 columns and bias 3 will be a single value because third layer has only one neuron in it right so now we have all the required stuff in order for us to compute the forward propagation calculations okay so now what we'll do we will create a method called as forward pass so for that let me do define forward pass and inputs will be x weights 1 i g h t s weights 2 weights 3 bias 1 bias 2 and bias 3 okay so these are the inputs for this particular method so now what we will do we will do the computations we will implement these computations in python okay so let's get get ahead with it so first let me comment it out hidden layer 1 computations okay so it will be z1 is equal to np dot matmul so it will be weights 1 comma x right and then we have to add the bias term to it bias 1 and a1 would be so it will be relu so we haven't defined that particular method here so let me define that okay so for that let me create a method define numpy relu and it will take z as input and it will return me the relu function output right so it will be return np dot maximum of 0 comma z right this is what relu does so a1 will be numpy relu of z1 okay so now i am done with the computations at layer 1 so similarly i have to do the computations at layer 2 and layer 3 hidden layer 2 computations so these are hidden layer 1 computations now i'll be working with hidden layer 2 computations z2 is equal to np dot matmul weights 2 will be my input for z2 and another input would be a1 the output from the previous layer okay and then i need to add the bias term here bias 2 right and a2 will be a2 will be again numpy relu of z2 right so now we have we are done with layer 2 computations so first is linear transformation then we will apply some non-linear transformation function that that will give us a1 and a2 now we will do output layer computations so it will be z3 is equal to np dot matmul weights 3 comma a2 correct and in the end we will add bias 3 then what we will do we will pass z3 to our sigmoid method so have i defined the sigmoid method no so for that let me define the sigmoid method as well so it will be define sigmoid so it again z will be the input right and then what it will return it will return the sigmoid output return 1 divided by 1 plus np dot exp of minus z so this is the sigmoid method 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus x so that's what i have implemented here so what i'll say i will i will call this sigmoid method i will pass it on to 
pass it on the Z3 linear transformations at layer 3. Now I have computed everything that is required to complete the forward pass, one forward pass. What I will do, I will store these values in a dictionary. Why I am going to store these values? Because when we go and implement back propagation and try to update the weights, we would need to refer these particular values Z1, A1, Z2, A2, Z3, A3, etc. Okay. So, for that sake, let us create a dictionary called as layer computations. Layer computations is equal to it will be a dict. Okay. And let me give a comment for this like dictionary to store the layer computations. Okay. So, what it will store? It will store computations at each layer, layer 1 linear transformations and activations, layer 2 linear transformations and activations, so on and so forth up to the output layer. Finally, we store the output value. Okay. So, here soon after computing the, soon after doing the computations for layer 1, let me store the values. So, layer computations of Z1. So, let me give the same key. Okay. Z1. And then layer computations A1 will be the key which will store activations at layer 1. So, similarly, we will store the values at layer 2 and layer 3. Okay. So, let me just copy this twice. And here I will call it as Z2, A2. The values would be Z2 and A2. It will be Z3, A3. Values I am storing will be Z3 and A3. So, now that I have Store these values, I will just return layer computations, this particular dictionary from this particular method. Okay. So, now what we will do? We will call this particular forward pass method. So, since it is returning layer computations, I am storing those in a variable called as layer computations, it doesn't matter what you call it, and I will call it forward pass. I have the same variables here, so I will just copy this particular method arguments. Okay, so I have created the variables by the same name, so it should not matter for me. So now what we will do, we will see if it is working fine or giving any errors. So if I just check the console, okay, so there are no errors. So in order to verify the output, let me just print the layer computations dictionary in a proper way so that we can understand the outputs. So print forward propagation outputs. Okay. So, it will be for key comma value in layer computations dot items print just for cosmetics let me print the key value give a colon here and then let me print the value associated with that particular key. Okay. So, now if I execute it. So, F10. Here we have the outputs. So you see Z1, this is the linear transformation from layer 1. So these are the outputs. So these are the outputs, these are the linear transformation outputs from this particular layer neurons. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 neurons we have. So we will have 5 numbers as output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we are passing this Z1 to our rectified linear unit method and getting the activation function outputs from there. And since we have 5 neurons, we will have 5 activated outputs from one particular layer, layer 1. And similarly, we will we will use A1 as input to compute Z2 and A2. So, Z2 is associated with layer 2, right, Z2 and A2. Layer 2 also has 5 neurons in it. And since it has 5 neurons, we will get 5 outputs. Z2 will have 5 numbers, A2 will have 5 numbers. And in the end, we will make use of A2 as input to layer 3 and compute Z3. And using this value, we will pass the pass this value to our sigmoid function, which will give us our prediction that is y hat or a3. Okay, so this is how you can implement a simple forward propagation in Python from scratch, just making use of numpy. Okay, so here we have seen just by we have implemented it only by considering a single data point. Right? just one data point with four features. So, what happens if we have multiple data points? So, let us say we have two data points or three data points. Okay. So, let us say we have 
x1, x2 and x3. So each of these data points will have its own features x1, x2, x3, x4 or let me write it in a better way. Okay. So x1, x2, x3, x4. So these are the features and this will be the training uh, data point 1, data point 2, data point 3 up to data point m. Right. So what happens to our forward propagation function if we get the data like this? So we have to just make a simple change not to the definition of the forward pass. We just have to arrange this x in a proper way. So let's say we, we are dealing with two data points now. Okay. If we are dealing with two data points, so we have to arrange our x in this particular way. So first column is first data point second column is our second data point okay so if you expand this it will be x11 x12 x13 x14 okay so first data point first feature first data point second feature first data point third feature first data point fourth feature so similarly we will have second data point first feature second data point second feature second data point third feature second data point fourth feature right so each column in this particular x numpy array represents one data point so if we have m data points it will be x1 x2 right and up to xm correct so the shape of this x would be n rows if we are dealing with n features and m columns if we are dealing with m data points okay so in order to demo this let me consider only two data points with four features so my x would look like my x would look like this right so it will be of shape 4 by Right. So let me create a random numpy array of shape 4 cross 2 and then show you how this part whether this particular for pass method works or not. Okay. So for that, what I'll do instead of this x here, I'll make a small change to my input feature. So I'll call x is equal to np dot random dot rand n of shape. 4 by 2 okay so now if i execute it let me just print inputs input data points okay and if i just say x here and now if i execute it let me not call this forward pass method right now okay so let me comment it out comment out everything i do not want these things here okay okay so now if i execute it I will have my x ready. So if you look at it, it is of shape 4 cross 2. So sorry, I haven't printed the shape here. So let me print it. So shape of x is x dot shape. Okay. So now if I execute it, 4 cross 2, we have two data points and four features each data point. Each data point is of four feature set. Okay. So now what happens if I pass this x to my forward propagation function, whether it will work or no? Let's check it out. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll just uncomment this. Okay. And then execute it. So you see, there is some error. Operands could not be broadcasted together. So it says bias one. So now you have to be careful. Since it is a one dimensional array phi cross phi comma, so there is no one here. So we have to make sure that our bias is also two dimensional numpy array. Okay, so let's fix that. So what I'll do for the sake of demo purpose, I'll just say dot reshape phi comma one, and I'll also do the same thing for bias two dot reshape phi comma one. Okay. Now, if I execute it and then check the output, bang, 
we haven't received that particular error okay so this is something related to broadcasting i will probably cover that in a separate video but just make sure if you are implementing forward propagation or implementing neural networks just make sure all of your numpy arrays are of two dimensions otherwise you would face issues just as we saw here right just few just a minutes back you saw error right could not be broadcasted together phi comma so it was a 1d array so in order to avoid those kind of errors it's always better and it is advised to deal with two dimensional arrays always so even if you have a simple set of numbers like this right it's better to convert this into a two dimensional numpy array of required shape okay so with in this way you will not face any issues with the dimensionalities while working with your forward pass computations okay okay that keep in mind that particular point now you see we have two records so we will have z1 in the same shape 4 cross 2 a1 will also be of same shape 4 cross 2 z2 will be of same shape 4 cross 2 a2 will also be of same shape 4 cross 2 and z3 will be of shape 2 a3 will be of shape 2 why let's check it out okay so now in this case so let me just write the we just need the weights and uh, input shape here okay so our input shape here in this particular case is 4 cross 2 okay and weights 1 is of shape 5 cross 4 weights 2 is of shape 5 cross 5 weights 3 is of shape 1 cross 5 so z1 how do you calculate z1 it is matrix multiplication between weight 1 and x and a1 will be activation function of z1 so whatever shape of z1 that will be the shape of a1 correct so now let's work out the shape of z1 so w1 is of shape 5 cross 4 and x is of shape 4 cross 2 right so the resulting output array would be of shape 5 cross 2 correct why 5 cross 2 does it make any sense yes why because we have 5 neurons in hidden layer 1 and we need one output from each neuron for each example so for one data points we will have 5 outputs right so for two data points we will have 10 outputs 5 for each data point right so z1 will be of shape 5 cross 2 total elements will be 10 correct 5 into 2 10 right similarly a1 will be of same shape why because you are applying rectified linear unit on each of these 10 elements element wise okay then we are doing z2 z2 will be calculated as w2 matrix multiplication with a1 correct now w2 is of shape 5 cross 5 and a1 is of shape 5 cross 2 correct and the resulting output will be z2 it will be of shape 5 cross 2 does it make any sense yes why because layer 2 also has 5 hidden 5 neurons in it and each data point will produce us 5 outputs so 5 outputs for each data point so we have two out two data points we will have five outputs for each data point one, five set of outputs for one data point another five set of outputs for another data point okay so it is like this so when i say five cross two it will have five rows one two three four five and two columns right so each column will be the output for data point each data point so one column first column is for x1 first data point second column is for second data point x2 okay so this is how the computations are done since z2 is of shape 5 cross 2 a2 will also be of shape 5 cross 2 okay so now almost we are at towards the end guys i know this video is long but just make i am making sure you understand the dimensionalities of everything okay so now we will compute z3 z3 is w3 matrix multiplication with a2 correct w3 is of shape 1 cross 5 and a2 is of shape 5 cross 2 correct and the resulting output z3 will be of shape 1 cross 2 does it make sense yes because we have one neuron in the output layer correct and we need two outputs why two outputs one output for each data point right so that's why we have one by two shaped 
num pi array here as z2, z3, and similarly a3 will be of say 1 cross 2. So we will have two numbers here, number 1 and number 2, right, in z3, and we will pass each of these numbers to sigmoid function. Sigmoid of number 1 and sigmoid of number 2 will get one output for each of these inputs. So again a3 will be 1 cross 2, right. So now we will verify whether we have got the same dimensionality in our outputs. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll also print the shape. Okay. So print shape. Okay. I'll just say shape and layer computations of E dot shape. So now if I execute it, I will also be able to see the shape. So see here z1 shape is 5 cross 2 which is expected right z1 5 cross 2 and a1 is also 5 cross 2 correct z2 is also 5 cross 2 a2 is also 5 cross 2 so till now we are good z2 and a2 correct z2 and a2 5 cross 2 now coming to z3 right so z3 will be for again two inputs right so it will have two numbers this is for first data point x1 this will be for second data point right and the shape is two comma again if you if you look at point this point here this is again a one dimensional numpy array so if you want to make use of this particular value in any other further computations it is advised to convert this into two dimensional numpy array since this is our output value we will not very much with this particular dimensionality okay so z3 is of shape 2 you can treat it as one row and two columns okay one row two columns and so is a3 activation applied on z3 is also of shape 1 cross 2 two values one row two columns okay so this is how you can implement a forward pass and this works no matter how many data points you have with you okay and if you have more than four features it will fail why because the dimensionality of weights one should be changed so you don't need to change anything here unless you are adding an extra layer to it okay so if you want to have three hidden layers instead of two you need to have another set of computations defined here in this particular method okay so this will go on go on go on and on and on so on and so forth up to as many layers as you have okay so in order to avoid this also there is a trick uh, which we will see in my probably after a week or two how do we define the blueprint of the network how do we define the layers how do we define the weights in a dynamic way we will see that in my next video okay so but for this video hope you have understood what forward pass is how we can implement it in numpy just making use of numpy and it works no matter how many data points you have. So first we saw how we can work it out by considering only one data point. Then we consider two data points. Now if I change it to three, it will work fine. It will not give us any issues, right? So that's it. The outputs will be three, one for each data point. So if I change it to 10, it will work without any issues. So the shape will change accordingly. So this confirms that our method, whatever we have defined here as a forward pass is working perfectly fine. Okay. So hope you guys liked the video and understood something from it. If you like the content, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Till we see in the next video. Happy learning. Bye-bye.